and welcome to our motorhome show. During this series, we will be visiting some of the best motorhome sites in Spain and Portugal. We'll also be finding out what it's really like to do wild camping. We begin our journey at Santa Pola Camping Park, near Alicante, Spain. This five-star campsite is spread over 70,000 square meters with 415 plots and 65 bungalows, a perfect stopover for the visitor who wants a gentle introduction to motorhome life. The large swimming pool area boasts three swimming pools, a gym, a spa, two restaurants, a supermarket, shops and entertainment complex. All of this surrounded by woods and a beautiful beach which is only five minutes walk from the campsite. Exactly, so how long have you guys been travelling? How long have you been on um, the road for? We left the UK at the end of May and we spent five, five to six weeks in, in the motorhome in the UK first just to, so we got to learn everything about the motorhome and how everything works and we were comfortable with it and then so we left at the end of May and we went to France and, and gradually sort of worked our way down through France and then through Spain and it's just been an amazing experience and yeah, we've, we've only imagine. been doing it for sort of four months so. I know, so you just said that's it, I don't want to be in England anymore, I want to travel, I want to have wings, I want to see the world. Yeah I think, yeah, pretty um, much. <laughs> yeah. This neatly laid out campsite offers four shower blocks and washing facilities. We found this friendly site has a real community feel with many campers returning year after year, with some motorhomers staying here for three to six months at a time. This site is not for the budget traveller, with pitches costing 30 euros per night, rising to 50 euros during the peak season. Not for us though, we wanted to head over to Portugal to experience some wild camping. A car park, you might say, and you'd be right, but what a location. The fishing village of Porto Covo is located on the Atlantic coast, 170 kilometres south of Lisbon. This delightful small village has one main high street with restaurants and gift shops, but the real treat is the miles of beautiful beaches and walks, perfect if you want to explore the coast in your motorhome or on your bike, as we did. Wild camping. Tell me about wild camping. Have you ever done yeah, that? Yeah, well, so we went to Portugal and on the way back. We had to Cordoba and uh, we, we went on the beach further on down in uh, Capa de Gato, didn't we? Capa de Gato, yeah. yeah um, and, uh, we, we hadn't intended to do that one, but we were looking for what's termed as an air. I, I don't know if you know what the airs are. No. France is more geared up to airs and it's designated places just for motorhomes. You can't go there with a caravan. And there's all different sorts. Some are free, some you get free electric, some you have to pay, but they're usually a nominal charge and it's so that you go into the village and use their facilities, perhaps buy some bread or a bottle of wine or something. You never know what is around the corner when you're on the road. We also found the picturesque town of Alcacer do Sol and stayed the night free of charge in a car park overlooking the river. And then we were on the road again. This small family run site is a perfect stopover when all you want to do is just sit back and relax for a couple of days. So 
Surrounded by olive groves, there is a swimming pool and shower block with laundry facilities and electric hookups, all at a reasonable 15 euros per night. This site is two kilometers from Campo Mayor, the home of Delta Cafes, the biggest coffee distributor in Portugal. This is way off the beaten track on the Portuguese-Spanish border. It took us quite a while to find this park, but was well worth the effort. So these guys are very devoted travellers. How many years have you guys been travelling for? Well, 12 uh, down here. 12 years round here. Uh, and uh, about three or four years around. Previous? Yeah. Portugal, Portugal France. France. Different areas. Different wow. areas in yeah. France. What a wonderful life to, yes. to lead. Yes. Very simple life. So what what made you decide to just buy a motorhome? Did you sell up at home? No. no you kept your, okay, so you kept your property yeah, at home. And yeah, this is sure. an additional thing so you can go off and travel. Yeah. We find this is better for us. Six months here and six months at home. Perfect. It's perfect for us. It's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a good way of living. How about this for a view? Last night we parked up and awoke to this. The town of Elvas is truly one of Portugal's hidden gems. The historic town is situated on the arid plains of the Portuguese-Spanish border. Few tourists visit here, but those who do are rewarded with a fascinating town, rich in history. We set off again for the final destination of this journey, heading across Spain to the province of Alicante and the beautiful town of Altea, six kilometers north of Benidorm. stayed at Orange Grove Park, tucked away in the countryside amongst the orange groves, hence the name. This small park had all the facilities you need, showers, toilets, laundry, it even has a dog washing area and all at a very reasonable 16 euros per night. Altea. This picture postcard town offers you, the visitor, a chance to experience a taste of old Spain, a journey just 15 minutes away from the bright lights of Benidorm. The old town with its winding cobbled streets leading up to the beautiful church at the top of the hill, with bustling restaurants and artisan shops down to the cosmopolitan promenade along the seafront, not forgetting the large selection of boutique shops and weekly market, making a trip to Altea the perfect day out. Join us on our journey as we explore the sights and people who are living the dream and their life on the road.